Hi friends, it's Deanna Williston with Our Blooming Catholic Life, and today we're going to open my Catholic mail. I just thought it might be interesting for some people, and we're going to get some updates from di different groups, learn about some resources that are out there, and so it should be fun. Um, instead of opening with praying our Oratio Ante Crucifixum, we're going to try the Ave Maria. I know we've really been practicing St. Francis's prayer before the crucifix, and some of us may still need practice on the Hail Mary. Now, I know I do. I say it decently, but here's the thing. If you've watched me pray the Rosary in Latin, what happens is when I get to the second Maria, the Sancta Maria, I tend to go ahead and move to another bead. My brain hears the word Maria and it changes to a next bead. So I kind of need to practice it because while I know the words and I understand pieces of it, I don't think I understand it in its entirety as I'm saying it, if that makes sense. So I really need to practice it just so I understand it as I'm saying it. I'm not saying Latin words. I'm fully saying the Hail Mary. And I definitely have bits of it. Um, and, and I think you can see that as I'm praying it, like I say two words, my brain goes, ah, and then I say two words, my brain goes, ah, and I needed to get to the point where my brain gets it the whole time. And I can go into meditating on the mysteries of the rosary a little better. I don't know if that's you, but that's totally what's been going on with me. So we're going to try it a little bit differently here. Ave Maria, Hail Mary, gratia plena, full of grace, dominus tecum. Is that the Lord is with you? It must be. Benedicta tu immolaribus. Blessed are you, Benedicta tu immolaribus. Must be among women. Which is funny because what's the word for women isn't malaribus. I'm going to have to look that one up. Why is it malaribus? Et benedictus fructus ventris tui Jesu. And the fruit of thy womb right? The, the blessed fruit of thy womb. Benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, and then it's Holy Mary, Mater Dei, Mother of God. This, that part's easy. Or a pro nobis, that's pray for us. Peccatoribus, pray for us. Peccatoribus, but must be now. <laughs> nunc, nunc also, et in hor mortis nostri, and in the hour death hour <laughs> right no stri at the end there is the hour so mortis no stri is our death so hora mortis no stri the hour death hour <laughs> and that's the sort of thing that makes me giggle when i'm praying amen so let's look up the malaria bus is the tricky one so i'm gonna pause and hey, i'm friends, gonna look i'm that really up. glad i took the time to look that up in latin i was always taught that femina was woman and so this malaria bliss thing was really driving me insane like why did they switch i don't know why they use this particular word that i did not find but the main thing i found was malaria bliss is supposed to be among women and it's because mulier means a woman a female a wife but it can also mean figuratively a coward or a poltroon which is funny another one says it kind of comes from the word molus that means soft and tender so it's not just even saying a woman it's saying something about the quality of the woman blessed are you among those you know feminine women and it's that's just so beautiful you know i love women of grace and their authentic femininity and that is one of the things that we're soft we're receptive and so that that's just that makes the it makes the prayer even more beautiful to me that they chose Larry Bus instead of something based off of Femina. That's really lovely. That's really lovely. Um, okay, so we're going to go ahead and pray that and then we're going to open my mail. <laughs> In nomine Patri et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. I just got that wrong. Let me try that again. Let's try that again. My endings fell off. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in valeribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, or pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et nihora mortis nostri. Amen. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus 
sancti. Amen. Wow, that really, really changed how I feel about the prayer, which is so funny. It just, it does. It made me feel very feminine. Um, so this is my first mail. It is from Holy Apostles College and Seminary. I've talked about it recently. This is for the alumni. What do alumni from Holy Apostles get? Prayer card. Um, yo, sorry. Prayer card. <laughs> Lovely. Mary, Queen of the Apostles. Um, oh, you can ask Holy Apostles, seminarians, and community to lift up my intentions through the intercession of Mary. There's a spot so I can tear this one off and return this, but then I lose this beautiful picture. No problemo, folks. I'm going to take a picture of this and my phone anyway to make it one of my phone's backgrounds. Um, I totally do that. For personal use, it's okay. Um, and then, oh, it has the Magnificat in here. Lovely. So it's then it's the Magnificat. On the back, it's showing you the Queen of the Apostles Chapel at, at the seminary. And then there is the Hail Mary. Lovely. So lovely little prayer card. Oftentimes, if I don't need these prayer cards, I'll send them um, on to the Franciscan Center. Sometimes they give them out in their blessing bags or with their meals. And so I can rip this off and, and send this part in. It's a lovely little way to help people pray. I'm sorry, my phone's blowing up. There's a family vacation being planned. <laughs> and there's much silliness. Um, then there's just an envelope, a return envelope. Aha! This was actually for the feast that was yesterday, so I must not have opened my mail in time. This was a gift. Ah, they are asking for a gift here. But what are they asking for a gift for? You may not know what Holy Apostles College and Seminary really is. Let, let's go in here. Let me go ahead and read this just so you know. Dear Deanna, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices. We too have cause for rejoicing. Along with Mary, our mother, we too magnify the Lord who has done great things for us. Soon we will celebrate a sacred inspired moment in our history at Holy Apostles College and Seminary. On the feast of the birthday of Mary, September 8th, our community will celebrate the 10th anniversary of the dedication of the Queen of Apostles Chapel, the center of our campus and ministry. At the time, our local newspaper headline could be forgiven for hyperbole as it proclaimed heaven on earth while celebrating the magnificent craftsmanship of the new 10,000 foot square, 10,000 square foot worship space. Before then, the old seminary chapel only had room for 80 people and had originally served as a tool shed. Beautiful simplicity was the architect's stated goal in the chapel's Byzantine style octagonal design. And I would say he achieved it. Why is this all so amazing? Holy Apostles College and Seminary, I believe, um, you hear the seminary at the end and you're like, well, is it a diocesan seminary? What is it? Because some seminaries struggle financially and um, it can be difficult around the world to prepare people for international missions. So Holy Apostles, Apostles College and Seminary is a place where seminarians can go or if they aren't quite ready for the seminary, they can go and do some pre-seminary studies um, or do some seminary classes there as well as you have a number of nuns and sisters that go there for classes and absolutely lay people go. But I think the original intent was to make seminary education and pre-seminary education available to all. And so it is a beautiful campus. It has a lot of online courses. They used to have a lot of free MOOCs. Do you remember those? Those, what were, <laughs> it was like an online, massive online open course that people could take. And so they have various programs and things that you can still participate in. There is YCAT radio, which is, I think it's WCAT is the radio call sign. And you can find those broadcasts, I believe, on YouTube. So there's still lots of education opportunities for you. And is it affordable? Oh my goodness. Holy Apostles, yes. <laughs> it is probably the most affordable Catholic education I have seen. It's pretty amazing. So they don't really offer scholarships because they offer everyone a super low price. And it's wonderful. And so if you want to support the seminarians that is a great way to support seminarians around the world while providing to a charity that's that's here in america it's in connecticut double check that 
yeah, it's in Cromwell, Connecticut. <laughs> okay, here's mail from Renewal Ministries. You have probably heard of Renewal Ministries. It's a very charismatic organization. Um, yes, you have probably seen Ralph Martin somewhere, or heard the name Ralph Martin. So this one comes with a newsletter. This is the September 2021. And he's giving you... Um, State of Religion in the U.S., a little survey there with an introductory letter. There's going to be a lot in here about Haiti. It tells you right here, hope for Haiti, spreading the gospel in Haiti, and then an article called You Will Receive Power. And so he's also broken down, even though his, his article is about two pages, he's broken down the three key points for you, so it's very accessible. Here's the article on Haiti. It does tell you here in the little block, Haiti Missions Incorporated has accomplished there what the government of Haiti has failed to do with billions of dollars. Interesting. Shortly after country coordinators Lloyd, Lloyd and Nancy Greenhall returned from their recent mission to Haiti, which you can read about on pages four and five of this newsletter, we heard the sad news about the assassination of the Haitian president and the unrest in the con that country. When we reached out to Lloyd and Nancy to see if they had any thoughts on the turmoil in Haiti and whether it affected their work there. Below, we share Lloyd's powerful and insightful response. Um, so, and I'll just read you the opening there. God has worked in many powerful ways during our recent mission trip. Fortunately, we got out before the assassination of the president. There's been widespread violence in Haiti for many years, mostly centered around Port-au-Prince. We've always worked primarily in Jeremy, Haiti, which is about an hour's plane ride from Port-au-Prince. The road from Port au Prince to Jeremy has become quite dangerous and this has caused supply problems for Jeremy. Ha! Ah, and that is a key in a lot of countries, even in our own, how to get things to the people who need them. And it's a huge difficulty. And then spreading the gospel in Haiti. Let's see. It says say here that Lloyd and Nancy minister in the United States, Haiti, Papua New Guinea, Ethiopia, and several other countries in Africa. They conduct missions, conferences, and retreats for adults and youth. They are also involved in prison ministry and work with the homeless. Nancy and Lloyd live in Texas and have two daughters, 14 grandchildren, and 11 great-grandchildren. So this is kind of inspiring. The article is going to tell you about their missionary work. But it's also inspiring that, that lay people can get out and do such great things. And down here in the corner, they give you three easy prayer requests for all those suffering from political unrest or natural disasters. For our hearts open to the promptings of the Holy Spirit so that we may help bring Christ in the lives of others. For the prayer intentions of all our supporters and their family members, especially as they found, face the challenges of illness and economic uncertainty. On the last article, and it is, it's almost three sides of a page. So, you know, three sides. So one page front and back plus one if you want to go there. Um, you will receive power. And this is by Dr. Mary Healy. So I've been hearing a lot about her recently. Ah, and this article is condensed from her recent talk at Renewal Ministries Online Pentecost Ministries Mission, sorry, which you can view at www.youtube.com backslash Renewal Ministries RM. So you spell out the words Renewal Ministries and then add the RM at the end. I'll probably put this in the description. And it starts out here, a shattering event. Jesus began public his public ministry with this simple message. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Mark 1.15 That is Jesus' entire preaching in a nutshell. Father Michael Scanlon said, The proclamation of the arrival of the kingdom was a shattering event in human history. Jesus was not just another teacher. The kingdom he proclaimed is not merely another alternative lifestyle you can accept or reject on the basis of personal preference, lifestyle, convenience, or cultural heritage. The central message of the kingdom cuts through such superficialities and speaks to man about his very life. It's a shattering event because Jesus came to reclaim what was stolen by the devil. His coming means the downfall of the kingdom of darkness, which doesn't go down without a fight. And, and that sounds very disheartening, but go back and remember the, the opening. You will receive power. This is going to be a very empowering article. It is 
scattered with lots of quotes and Bible passages. So that's going to be an exciting read. Um, and that's pretty much it. It gives you a calendar of events and ways to stay connected. And of course, there was a reply card on here. They always have a reply card. Um, and you can, you can say that you're going to pray for them. You can donate um, one time. You can join in a monthly membership. But also, it always has a catalog at the end. So there's always a list of resources, of books that you can buy. Um, and so it's nice that they take the time. It's not a full catalog. It's not taking up a lot of space. There's more resources, of course, available online. But these are the ones that are either most important or most important right now. And I love that. And it has books, CDs and DVDs, and then booklets, if you just want the booklets. And one of them is that one that I had before, Fear god and give him glory i love that book a uh, little booklet and you can see a review on that elsewhere on my channel let's see here father john a harden sj archive and guild yes so he's a jesuit which may surprise you that i get mail from him but i'm pretty excited i mean he's been passed for a while it's not really from him it's from uh, the guild so let's see what i got here this is from august 15th dear servant of God, dear friend of the servant of God, Father John A. Harden, SJ, praised be Jesus Christ now and forever. Ah, thank you for viewing the website of Father John A. Harden, Archive and Guild. We are blessed to have a place to post information on the faithful work of Father Harden during his long and dedicated priestly ministry. As you know, we continue to add resources and information on Father Harden's ministry and publications to the Archive and Guild website. The cause for Father Harden's canonization has begun and as you can imagine, it is a large task. Please pray for the time and pers personnel needed for the attention to the requirements and procedures for the cause to continue. You can purchase many of Father Hardin's writings with his sage advice and deep reflections from the Eternal Life Apostolate, which he founded along with Abbot Edmund McCaffrey and Mr. William J. Smith. He's provided so much spiritual and theological reflection for which we are also very grateful. And the website address is www.lifeeternal.org. And I did receive a prayer card for Father John Hard. If you've not seen his work or read his work, um, again, it's mostly booklets, but there's a number of online, um, either video or audio lectures. They are absolutely worth your time. He has beautiful, beautiful reflections. I think we also had, we reviewed one of his books, A Catechism on the Catholic Church. It was done, um, I think, fairly on in John Paul II's pontificate. Um, deep reflections on the Eucharist. Um, that is where my main focus is when I, I do read or listen to his lectures and things. But he has a great sense of humor. If you ever are able to view or hear his lectures, he also takes Q&A at the end. They can be any Q&A. They are anonymously submitted and so they can be on a variety of topics and he has not just um a way of explaining things beautifully but he also has an amazing sense of humor and so you're gonna love him if you're a friend of john bryburn you are gonna love father john Harden. um so i encourage you to get out there this one is from let's see the franciscans now this is the province of the sacred heart which is not the i don't think it's the province i live in this is one, I think, yeah, it's mainly for the charity called St. Anthony's Bread, which um, prayers and support go to training young men to become Franciscans, caring for those who pioneered St. Francis's legacy in the U.S., helping ministers in parishes, counseling centers, food pantries, hospitals, peace centers, prisons, radio ministries, schools, shelters, soup kitchens, missions, and bringing the gospel to those who need it. Um, I'm always curious reading this. This is not one I give to regularly. I have given to for specific causes, partially because they don't say outright what Franciscans they are. Like, are you orders of Friar Minor? Are you Capuchins? It doesn't say. It's really funny because it's not on here. And so I'm going to have to look it up again because every time I think I look it up and every time I forget and it's not listed here. Um, let's see. He is talking about mentioning the friars serving ministries both locally and around the world need your prayers. 
as well as prayers for the ongoing crisis unfolding in Afghanistan and the desperate need for our prayers and penance. As reported by Catholic news agencies, Pope Francis on Sunday urged Christians to intensify their prayer, penance, and fasting for the situation in Afghanistan as he entrusted the souls of those who have died to God's mercy. And again, I honestly legitimately don't know what friars they are, so I'm going to have to look that up again, but they are in St. Louis, Missouri. Here's the, it's not even the last one, here is an exciting one. It's an exciting one. It comes out once a year, the EWTN family calendar. And I was kind of excited to get it. Why? So it's the 2022 EWTN family calendar. It's a token of gratitude for past generosity. And as usual, there's always a prayer card that you can fill out and send back. They keep them somewhere in the chapel, I believe. Um, there's a special color envelope to let them know that this is from the calendar. Um, the calendar includes many feast days and all the holy days of obligation, so it can help you grow in your faith. The photos are from the EWTN Vatican Bureau. They photograph these stunning pictures for every month. So I'm going to give you a little sneak peek there. Oh, <laughs> it's showing you some of the ministries. Hey, there's Johnette. Um, so I will show you this calendar page. So here's January 22. And you can see not only are the feast days listed like in the block, but it's also listed at the bottom. And it lists some highlights from the various programming that they have. Um, so, oh, oh, I'm peeking on the back. I will tell you there is a photo of Carlo Acutis back here. There are some lovely photos. I'm sorry, you're just going to have to get your own calendar. <laughs> But that is one of the benefits is that it has all the holy days. So even if this calendar doesn't fit, um, you can't fit your family's things on here, it's okay. They list the different seasons, some highlights of programming. You can always copy that in. You know, I like to use my happy planner, which I've gotten lax in. And I definitely realized this week that's a no-no. I need to go back and fill that in. And so it's going to be great to have all of those holy days listed there. Now, I'm also getting the National Catholic Register which is awkward because I'm getting it super late. This is April's. Why do I have this now? I don't know what's going on that I'm getting them super late. So the the current news stuff isn't isn't getting to me in time. And I know I'm having problems with all my mail. So that's that's not the biggest judge in the world. Um, there's always tons of ads in the middle. So <coughs> pick it up carefully because they will fall out all over your house. It does come in the mailbox. And it's interesting because, yeah, like I say, the, the immediate news, like maybe this, this article here isn't so up to date, but um, wait, this is about traveling. So there's lots of other ones that go in depth on things that are very awesome or their opinions that may have things on various angles that you didn't consider. Um, there's one on Divine Mercy, The Great Grace. Humble sinners alone can receive it by Father Roger J. Landry. Father Capuchin comes home. <laughs> There's a little ad. Do intelligent people take Satan seriously? There's lots of ads for Catholic colleges. So there's lots of articles in here that are going to go more in depth than maybe you've seen or have some really beautiful artwork that you may like. <laughs> I'm lucky I'm not showing you. Um... There's book reviews as well. So like, here's one reality. So even the, the artwork is gorgeous. It's full color. So that's lovely. Um, here's one on China. So they do go into different issues in depth. And here's one of the ads for a university. Um, lots of stuff on here. So really great resources in the corner. There's resources for other people. Free religious cards, quality Catholic books and more. Um, request Gregorian Masses for Souls in Purgatory in the Angelican Academy, Catholic and online. You can earn your AA or your BA. There's books that you can order, statues you can buy. So there's lots of resources in here besides the Timely News. So even if it comes to you late, it's still a, a wonderful resource that you could spend forever. I thought it used to have a crossword puzzle. Don't judge me. I really liked that feature and 
I don't think I've seen it lately, but that again could be me. I'm going to breeze through here. Are there any puzzles in here? I liked the puzzles because it increased my vocabulary. And it was the only crossword puzzle I could do um, because all the ones in any secular papers and things have all these pop culture references that I don't get at all. Yeah, no, there's no crossword puzzle in here. So in case you're you're the Catholic uh, register and you've watched this long, bring back the puzzles because they helped me increase my vocabulary and learn about new saints and things as I had to look up the words to fill them in. So I thought that was a great feature, but maybe it was just me. I liked the Catholic puzzles. Okay, friend, oh, that would be a great way to help people learn Latin too. Have some of the puzzles in Latin. Come on, Catholic register, you can do it. Okay, friends, I hope you've enjoyed this goofy, ep goofy episode of me opening my mail. But there's lots of great resources out there in charities, Catholic charities. So if you've got a favorite one, put it in the comments below. Share so everyone can know and possibly get on that mailing list, which sounds like a crazy thing. But I, there's a lot of them that are really valuable and I learn a lot of great things. Um, I get some from convents as well. So you can't normally talk to poor Claire's and convents, but they do send out regular little newsletters to let you know what's going on in their works and any fruits of their labor <laughs> and so it's a beautiful thing so if you've got a favorite place to hear from a favorite newsletter put that in the comments below god bless you friends oh wait let's practice our prayer again and then in nomine patris et filii et spiritus sancti amen can we get a close-up on her uh, there we go ave maria gratia plena dominus tecum Benedicta tu in malaribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in hora mortis nostri. Amen. Bye, friends.